it's Ollie here from Van Life Conversions. In this video, I'll be showing you the method that I use to build overhead cupboards for your own van conversions. I like using this method because it's lightweight and it's a strong structure. If you look at the items in front of me, these are the component parts that you'll need. We use um, two by one plain square wedge uh, pine. This will form the structure for the overhead cupboards. And then for the baseboard and the dividers, we'll be using nine mil MDF. I like to use dot paper to create a working drawing and cut list when planning to build cabinetry. First, I draw in the structure of the battens and work out the lengths of timber that I need to cut. I then include the baseboard and side pieces for the sketch. This process allows me to visualise the cabinets and produce an accurate list of the components to then assemble. I start to assemble the outer frame using a pocket hole jig and screws to fix the battens together at 90 degrees. So now that the main frame has been built using the pocket hole method, I'm going to mark on the area that I want each of the dividers to be located. We're going to have three cupboard fronts on this van. And because the uh, length is one meter at 26, I'm going to draw a line at a third of that. So we're gonna have 42 centimeters and 84 centimeters for each of the dividers. So now that I've got the guide for each cupboard, I'm gonna put the vertical dividers in. And I'll just do this like so. And I line them up with the pencil line. And one thing to bear in mind is where there's a bit of tear out, I have that facing inside the cupboard um, so that the um, neater edge is on show when you open the cupboard door. So I line them up with the pencil line and then what I'm going to use is a, a pilot hole for my drill. I'm using a drill bit that is slightly bigger than the screw through this top piece of timber because I don't want it to bite into this top piece. I'll have it bite into the bottom piece and get pulled um, up. I put one screw through each of the battens and I sink it about a millimetre below the surface so that it's uh, not protruding. I uh, offset them slightly from one another and drill the pilot hole at a slight angle that's opposing one another just to prevent them from being able to twist. I'm now gonna cut this nine mil MDF baseboard to length, which is one meter 26. I'm gonna do that using a plunge saw and this track. So for the next phase of the build, we're going to fix this nine mil baseboard onto the bottom side of the frame. And we're gonna do this using 25 mil self-tapping screws. So I'm just using my index finger and thumb to flush the MDF baseboard to the edge of the frame. Now in the Citroen Relay, there's a pillar which makes the wall stand out slightly at a bit of a curve. So I've cut this baseboard slightly longer than I intend it to be. It's 38 centimetres currently, and I'm gonna do a three centimetre scribe to bring the uh, width of the baseboard down to 35 centimetres. So I've temporarily fixed the overhead cupboard uh, to the roof. I've just drilled through and screwed using 40 mil screws, and these fix into the horizontal 12 mil plywood strips that are on the ribs of the van. What I want to do now is I want to scribe the back of the baseboard to fit the curve of the wall. And also I will bring the frame back in line with this vertical wall here. To do this, I'm going to cut myself a scribe and I'm measuring how big that scribe needs to be. And it's 27 millimeters. I'll do that now. So when I need a, a scribe of a certain length, I'll go into my scrap bin under my chop saw, take out a piece of um, sheet material and cut it to the desired length for the scribe. So for this one, it's going to be 27 millimetres. Run a pencil line along the baseboard 
using the scribe as a guide to match the profile of the wall. Here is the cut line made by the scribe. You can see how the shape is not a perfectly straight line, but it's curved. I'll now cut this with plunge saw. So now that I'm happy with the scribe of the baseboard, I'm going to prepare this fixing baton to fix through the baseboard and into the wall, which will secure that back edge onto the van. So to do this, I'm going to use a four mil drill bit and a counter sink to sink the screws. So I'll now place this uh, piece of timber onto the back and start to fix it through the baseboard. Okay, so now that the overhead is secured uh, into the van, I want to now make the dividers and the end pieces to separate each of the cupboards from the inside. Uh, to do this, I'm going to cut a square of MDF and then scribe the back edge to the shape of the wall. Uh, to get the size, I measure the front by the length. What I've done is I've cut this sheet material here to 30 centimetres by 37 centimetres. Um, this length here is longer than the actual length that I'm gonna need for my final scribe, but it allows me to make adjustments and a, a need to scribe um, after a couple of passes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the distance at the widest part, which here is 12 centimeters, and I'm gonna go slightly less than that to get myself a, enough um, room to make a neat scribe once I've got the initial cuts made. So I'll cut a scribe piece now at 10 centimeters, Okay, so you see I've made the first cut, which has allowed me to move the uh, piece closer to the wall. I can now start to get a more detailed scribe. You can see at the top edge, there's a gap at the front and no gap at the back. Uh, you don't need to cut a scribe block for this. You can just run your pencil along. And then it gives you a cut line. Once I make that cut, it will sit flush against the roof. Okay, so now I've made that flush to the roof, I'm going to make my final scribe, which is using this 25 mil block. So now the final neat scribe is done, I'm happy with the fit and I'll use this as my template for the other three pieces. So now that the two end pieces are scribed and put into place, I will now amend the template so that it will suit the inner divider pieces this sits inside the frame, so I'll need to take nine millimeters off of the bottom of the template, take a batten width off the front of the template, and then cut a 90 degree notch in the back corner, which will be where the horizontal beam passes. the internal dividers I'm going to be using these small 90 degree brackets, a pilot hole drill bit and some 10.5 mil hinge screws. To ensure that the dividers are at a 90 degree angle I'm using a framing square just to mark the line that I want these dividers to sit on. So you can see that I've attached the 90 degree brackets into the pine using 16 mil screws. And I've just basically put the panel up and to ensure that it's 90 degrees to the base, I'm using my framing square to run a pencil line. To then put the um, screws into the MDF, I'm gonna be using a pilot hole and some 10 and a half mil hinge screws. For some additional strength along this bottom edge, I'm just going to run some 15mm brad nails uh, through the plywood and into the MDF base. As there's a slight uh, lip of this bit of plywood, I'm just going to run my flush trim route a bit just to bring that level with the MDF baseboard. You can see now the internal dividers have been put in. I'm really happy with the scribe. 
um, and that little notch at the back has worked out nicely. It's advisable to have this painted whilst it's outside um, just to help seal the edges of the cut timber. In the two centre dividers you can see I've cut a small notch. Uh, this will serve to feed a small cable uh, through which will enable a couple of LED touch sensitive downlighters to be fixed through the baseboard of this kitchen unit overhead.